Hi everyone, welcome back to the Interfilm Show, where we give you a sneak peek of all the best things going on at Interfilm. Coming up on today's show, we give you loads of great filmmaking tips to help you film your own movies this summer and speak to two young filmmakers who have already premiered their first short film in Norfolk. Director Mark Silver drops into the studio to tell us about his new documentary, Who is Diana Kristoff? We look at new DVD release, The Double, starring Jesse Eisenberg, and we tell you about our latest competition. Well, the summer holidays are here and that means just one thing. It's the perfect time to start making movies. There are loads of elements that go into making a great film. A good idea, great script, strong acting and an awesome soundtrack. But it's also key to have your actors looking the part. Earlier this month, BAFTA member and hair and makeup artist Bob O'Brien visited the Swinton High School in Pendlebury to give her top tips on movie makeup. Here's what happened. seen a real makeup artist come in and like talk to us about it. I didn't know what to like expect of it. I just didn't know how it was gonna like all plan out but it's been really fun and exciting. So any thoughts about what you might want to do when you leave school yet? This uh, this you would have yeah. did you want to do this at ten o'clock this morning? No. Can you outline what a hair and makeup artist does in particular? So we do everything from beauty makeup on leading ladies. The other thing we get to do is like cuts and grazes. So at the moment, I'm just going to take a little bit of putty and I'm just going to squish his eyebrows apart. In film, you've got to make it really detailed. Right, now we're going to get the bit of fresh scab. This one's called Bloody Runny Gloopy Blood. I bet you all can't wait to have a go, can you? You're gonna, I'll tell you what, from now on in, you're going to be looking at cuts and bruises in a whole different way, aren't you? We've got loads more from the Hair and Makeup Masterclass, as well as a handy template that you can print and practice makeup on, so be sure to check out the extras box. Next up, we're lucky to be joined in the studio by Sam and Jake from Kingsland Academy in Norfolk. Last year, they raised a lot of money, wrote a great script and put on some very silly costumes and premiered their short film to the paying public. So we think they're just the right people to talk to about making movies. But first, let's take a look at their short film, Too Cool to Kick Ass. Hey Sam and Jake, thank you for joining us. As an avid superhero fan, I really enjoyed your short film. Thank you. Cheers. Can you tell us a little bit about what your film is about and how you came up with the idea for it? Well, it's uh, basically just a teenage superhero wannabe film. <laughs> it started, uh, a friend from college came up with the idea of uh, somebody like making themselves into a superhero and we thought it'd make a good script, so we just started writing up. How did you pay for things like the costumes, the equipment, the set? Most of the funding came from Kickstarter, or yeah. the online funding page, uh, and then we also got a little bit from a local supermarket where we went down dressed up in our costumes, talking to the public, trying to get them involved and in selling tickets. What did you learn about filmmaking while making this short? You can't get it perfect every time. You're going to have to face up to mistakes every now and then. You soon learn. Yeah, even if and you do like 40 takes for one yeah. scene. What would you say to people out there hoping to give filmmaking a go? Just do it. Yeah, well, um, we didn't really know that students could do this sort of thing until our club started up just over three years ago, really. And you know, so like once we started, we completely spiralled off into what we wanted to do. Yeah. And it's, we, we realised that you don't need a massive budget and top students and professionals in to make it as good as you can get. Yeah. We, yeah, we just went along with it and we've learned that we're pretty good at it. So, yeah. OK, thank you for chatting to us today. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of your short films. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Um, should we be fighting now? Oh. 
You'll never win, Obvious. You merely adopted the Obvious. Sam and Jake's short is brilliant, so make sure you check out the full thing after the show. Of course, film can also be used to explore some more serious issues that you may be tackling in your life. A bunch of people in our Keeping It Show Real project got together to make a documentary about their lives. Let's check out the intro. This story that I write, it ain't the force type. It's the truth, I mean it. I hope that's brought to light. So every day and night I wish that we would get it right. Cause you're my brother Tom and I wish that we would get along. If you like that, make sure you check out the full Keeping It Showreel film after the show. We hope all this has inspired you to get out there and start making your own movies. We've got so many resources and top tips for you to use and all the info you need is in the extras box. And if you're feeling really adventurous, why not enter our competition, the Long Take Challenge. Now we have another visitor to the Ince Film Show studio. Mark Silva is the director of the brilliant new documentary, Who is Diana Cristal, in which he joins forces with Mexican actor Gael Garcia Bernal to shine a light on the immigration debate in America. These people, as much as they are invisible in life, they're invisible in death. It's very hard to identify them. Nobody's out there searching for them. Diane Crystal was definitely an atypical case. Who's this person? We don't have any report of somebody who was missing that had those tattoos. We're trying to see if somebody knows this person and try to ID them. En vida era considerado invisible, un ilegal. Ahora en la muerte es un misterio por resolver. Hi Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. What's your documentary about and how did you come across the Diani Cristal story? So our film is about the discovery of a dead body in the desert of Arizona, very near the border with Mexico. And uh, I got permission to be embedded with the search and rescue police when they recover skeletal remains and dead bodies from the desert and uh, they find about 200 a year in that part of the desert and they turn out to be migrants who are trying to get into the US for work. We see the migrants riding on the roof of a train. What were the challenges of filming this in terms of audio and shaky cameras? We had to hide behind this fruit stand so the driver of the train didn't see us and then when he'd driven past we kind of ran up to the train and had to clamber on with all the equipment and everything. Um, and then once we kind of settled down on the roof of the train, we then had two monopods um, and a boom pole with the microphone wrapped in like 10 t-shirts to try and keep the noise of the wind away from the microphone. The film made me realize the other side of the immigration story. Before I watched it, I didn't really know much about it other than it's illegal. But afterwards, I feel that I know it well enough to be able to form a proper opinion and to be able to speak my mind on it. Did your opinion change between the start of filming and last take that process? Even though on the surface it's a film about immigration, really it's a film about big economic division, like why some countries are rich and some countries are poor. And then it just made me think if I was from a place where I wasn't able to earn money for my, for my family, I'm sure me and my friends would also want to make that journey. And it just made me think about the universal things that we as humans all need. Um, and once you start thinking about it like that, for me, the definition of illegal and legal is less important than just human beings need to move places sometimes to survive. You filmed the funeral of the missing migrant, which was obviously a very personal moment between the family. Were there any moments as a documentarian that you had to draw the line and just think this is too personal for camera? I was filming as they were putting the coffin into the ground and some of the people in the village wanted to open the coffin to check that it was the right person in the coffin. So at that point I looked at the brother of the man who died and I just said to him, I'm, I'm, I'm not filming now. 
we want our audience to get out this summer and start making their own films. What's your advice for making a documentary? Go out there by any means necessary, even if you're making a film using your mobile phone. Um, I think it's less important about the quality of the footage and things like that, and more important that you have a look inside yourself and work out what it is you want to express, and then go out into the world and build a relationship with the story you want to tell and the people in that story. Okay, well that's it. Thank you for coming and answering my questions. Cool, thank you very much. Nunca podré entender la dimensión de los peligros que enfrentó. Solo puedo tratar de recorrer sus pasos. People sneaking across the border. To my mind, the problem is all economic. The American capitalist economy needs blue-collar labor. For me, it's very frustrating knowing that somebody had a dream, but they ended up being a number, a statistic. Who is Diani Cristal is in cinemas now, so if you go see it, send us a tweet and let us know what you thought. Also, if you write a review, send it in to our Summer Cinema Review Competition. Now let's take a look at another thought-provoking film, The Double, which is now available on DVD or you could rent it from our catalogue. The Double stars Jesse Eisenberg as timid office worker Simon, who is driven toward madness when his doppelganger James, who looks exactly like him but is confident and charismatic, starts work at his office. No sir, breakfast in the evening. Oh, do you still have eggs here? Yeah. And do you have a frying pan? Yeah. Then give me the damn food. The idea of a doppelganger, which is just a fancy word for look-alike, appears in many films and is used to create things like humour, terror and even confusion. If you'd like to explore the theme of doppelgangers further, be sure to check out our doppelgangers topic in the extras box, which covers films like Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece, Vertigo, comedy drama adaptation, which serves up a double dose of Nicolas Cage, and Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator. Now, it's competition time, and we've got an amazing script-to-screen competition running at the moment. Check out our script-to-screen resource pack in the extras box, and you'll find loads of info about some of our favourite book-to-film adaptations, including comedy sci-fi, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, survival drama, Into the Wild, and The Great Gatsby, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Then, all you have to do is write a review, draw a book cover, or create a short script, and you could win up to £500 for your school library or film club. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you for next month's show which goes out September 4th. Bye!